Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. One thing that connects these two guys, Bobby Fischer and Nigel Short, is the so-called online games of 2001. Whether these had taken place or not, the games had generated enormous publicity from a variety of sources. The BBC published an article, Chess Legend Plays the Web, and if you like to read the small print, please pause. There is nothing other than saying the two had met online and how Fisher had disappeared from public view for over 10 years. Of course, this BBC article refers to the original interview Short gave to The Telegraph, claiming that it was certain he played with Fisher at the time. Very fine the authenticity of the game is not possible because Fisher is no longer around to verify, so I guess we will remain in the dark about this short Fisher encounter. The games had generated plenty of publicity because Fisher is said to have used some very weird opening choices in all of his games. I've already published two Bobby Fisher Nigel short games, which you would find in the playlist under the name 2001 Bobby Fisher's Secret Games versus Short. Irrespective of whether Short met Fisher or not, these games are very fun to watch. So let us assume for now Short did meet Fisher, just for the sake of it, and move on to look at their fifth game. They had played eight games online and Fisher won all eight of them. So, okay, here we go. Short kicked off with an E4 opening and Fisher replied with F6. We already know this type of open is considered to be a very bad choice for black, but does it matter when we're looking at this very first move? Let's find out. Short went for the center with D4 and straight away Fisher responds with C5, trying to undermine White's attempt to control the center. Short developed the knight and out of nowhere, Fisher comes in with a check. Short blocked with the knight, and the game continued with d6, and a bishop check followed. Fisher blocked using his own bishop, and though removing this bishop with a check would have been possible, Short increases the pressure by lining up his queen to intercept just in case. Fisher here waited and went for e5. There was an immediate exchange on e5, and though Short's position is much better, does this mean much? Given he stood much better in all of his previous games, he knew Fisher always came up with something extraordinary because he was up by 4 0. Short here developed his bishop. At this point in the game, we saw a number of pieces coming off, starting with the bishops and then the queens. So when this knight got his place on b5, Fisher could only choose from two moves and did know he was going to be subjected to a series of follow-up checks. He decided for a king move to d7 and of course, Short had the dream position because he not only castled, but castled with a check. Fisher moved on to attack the knight. And again, a4 is one possible option to defend him. I guess Short decided to move his knight because he would need to move out the way when a6 kicks in. Fisher here developed his own knight. And at the same time, getting ready to activate his rook. Short repositioned his knight from f3 because, if you think about it, what function does his knight have sitting on this square on f3? Right now this knight is quite lame. Fisher too went for a knight move, keeping a tight control on this square on c4. Short surprisingly decided to give up his control on the square by moving out his knight to this spot on b3. So how effective was his knight repositioning? Knight c4 followed, and if Fisher wants to grab this bishop here, there is nothing stopping him now. 
Shaw is no rookie and a very tactical player. He got his rook out to d5 with aims to move his other rook into the pitcher. Fish is still able to remove this bishop, but is there a rush to take him? Well, if you take him now, Shaw will have to contend with a doubling, but did he go for the bishop in the end? I think it's Fisher to move, so let's deal first with how Fisher decided to move on. He went for b6 to stop the attack on this king, and only when the other rook joined in on d1, it was time for the bishop to be given up for the knight. Fisher seems to be doing quite well, but has some very badly positioned pieces. His entire king side is so jammed up, and unless he finds a way to develop them, he will be in trouble. Fisher went for a knight move, but there is only one move in this position. If you attack the rook, this knight jump to e7 is going to block out the bishop's access to the diagonal. A rook check is going to lead to disaster, because after this king evacuates to b7, do you expect to see another check? And Fisher will be done for the day. Whether you place your king on a6 or back to b8 is going to lead to the same outcome. We can try both responses to a king move to a6 and a king move to b8. Let's start with this one, the king to a6 option. Any ideas on how short can finish off here in 2, 1 and pause? This is a bit of a tough one. Have you come up with this rook move to d6 using the rook from d1? Okay, if you did, put him back and try something which is 10 times better. What you're looking for is this. You want to try again before I reveal? With the king being completely isolated on a square no king wants to be on, you still need to be able to find the move that counts. Once you see the first move, the rest is self-explanatory. Knight takes c5 for the check. After the knight is sacked, it would now be the time to bring out the other rook. And since this comes in with a fresh check, the king seems to be able to escape to a5 and white has nothing to take him down. But don't be fooled because there is just one move that counts here. Provided you find this magical move, there is no coming back and white wins in a flush. Rook b7. After a6 to prevent the mate on b5, there is his a3 move, and that is all you need. c4 looks to be in time to stop the mate, but when the rook moves into b4, the mate is now unstoppable, and that will be it. We can now return to the other move black can go for in this position. And this is the move, the king to b8. After this knight's move to b5, even after this knight moves out to c6 to stop the check on d8, okay, there seems to be no mates just yet, but just look at what happens when the knight moves again, and not only the rook is going to disappear very shortly, but there is no way white can lose this game. A6 is one way of responding, but I can leave the rest with you to figure out. All this started with the attempt to move the knight out to the wrong square. Fisher did move this knight, but got him to H6. Short responded with his very defensive move to stop the knight from becoming more active. I'm not sure the knight is active on h6, but it's far better than any other move. Fisher went for another knight move, and now with this response, he seems to be right back into the game. Short is looking to make use of key squares, and one specific block he's interested in is this spot on b5. Now, the only way to get your knight there is by pushing on with a move like a4, and this is what Short went for. A6 is on the cards, and I'm sure Fisher will bring it up before the knight gets in on B5, or even after. 
Fischer here went for a bishop move to d6, which may, after all, encourage the knight to get into b5. Short moved on with this knight, adding pressure on the bishop, and in turn Fischer got his otherwise very badly positioned rook into the game. The position looks dead equal, and the game can go in either direction. There is one specific combination to increase the pressure on this bishop on d6, and short went for it. He repositioned his knight first to this square with ideas of moving him to c4. Fischer, or our Fischer imposter, knew exactly what was going on and in this light moved the rook to d7 so that should a very likely knight c4 appear, Fischer would be able to plug the gap by getting his own rook into the picture. And this is exactly what happened. Short does have a decent position, but equally decent is that of Fischer's. There are four white pieces attacking the bishop, and there are one, two, three, four pieces, four black pieces defending him. Short here went for c3, and Fischer decided to clear up a few pieces off the board. He started up with this bishop move. No doubt the rooks came off one by one. And only then short advanced to a5 in the hope that it would gain an exchange on either b6 or a5. But this move ran into this monster of a move. And these were the first signs in this game where short was losing his superior position. He only realised this when Fischer placed his king on c6, going after the knight, having sent the knight back to a3. Fischer went on to attack the other knight, and again, once this knight was forced to retreat, Fischer continued his attacks. He got b4 in, and once the exchange took place, this knight was once again under attack, though it seems a knight move to c4 is the best white has. Short bypassed this move and went for the same knight but chose a different square. He had not taken into account this king move. Short was under no illusion this game was going to be lost, but did fight as much as he could. He went for knight b3 to protect a5, but whether you go for a king move to a4 or what Fischer went for, Short was hopeless. He knew all too well a5 was going to drop and resigned when he saw this nasty knight coming into d6. And this is what it takes in chess to win. Sometimes a position like this is normally equal, but with the black king dominating the board, white is doomed. For those strategic players, the king is very unlikely to move into a4 because black does not want to allow the white knight to be freed up. Keeping a tight control on c5 is key. The knight on d6 is enough to secure e4, and the bishop on b8 would eventually come in to remove a5, and again, without having to move your king out of this very strong outpost. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. These games are quite amazing in a way because we have seen chess being played so differently than normally the case. There is more to follow, of course, so until next time, this was your Chess Puzzler.